Zenith! Good day to you, and farewell. Just a moment, Hilda. How are you feeling? Sorry? Oh, uh, fine. I'm doing just fine. I'm glad to hear it. I had heard that you requested a substitute for your cleaning duty due to an illness. <sighs> you really do know everything, Seth. Just prior to that, you also asked for someone to take your place with table setting. I believe that was due to a uh, wrist injury. It was not too serious, I hope. Ah, you heard about that. The wrist is all healed up, thank you. I seem to recall also that you declined to participate in a mock battle. That was due to a headache, yes? I have a very fragile body, you see? <coughs> it's so kind of everyone to make accommodations. Indeed. It is a great friend who offers to help without complaint. See that you treasure such friends, and that you return the favor. Of course! Well then, I should really be... By the way... Was there something else you wanted? It so happens I am on my way to the chapel to offer my prayers. Would you care to join me? No, no, I, I wouldn't want to intrude. I've already offered up all my prayers for the day. Marvelous. We must always remember to give our thanks to the goddess. It is essential that we offer our prayers to her each day, that we reflect on our deeds and strive to live as she would want us to live. For the goddess sees all that we say and do. Oh, I... Now, if you will excuse me. Of course. Goodbye now. is Sedith so scary? It feels like he can see right through me. I guess that's his way of saying stop being lazy. I wish he'd just scold me outright. This is precisely why I try to avoid him. Oh, it's Sedith. I'd better slip away before he... Ah, I see you are indulging in a bit of reading. You are fond of books, I take it? Yes, reading's one of my favorite pastimes. I was just finishing up, actually, so I think I'll... That is most fortuitous. Um, fortuitous? How do you figure? Come with me. I have a story to share with you. Once upon a time, deep in the cold mountains, there lived a lazy fox and an industrious squirrel. The squirrel worked tirelessly all day long, while the fox did nothing but lounge around and play. When autumn came, the squirrel hurriedly gathered up acorns for the winter. But the fox continued to play without a care. A biting winter fell upon the land. The mountains, caked in snow, concealed all nourishment from sight. The hungry fox went to the squirrel's dwelling, but the squirrel had locked up tight and gone to sleep. Every so often, the squirrel would wake, enjoy a nibble of an acorn, and then return to an easy slumber. The fox, on the other hand, with nowhere else to turn, was forced to scrounge for food in the bitter cold of the forest. Forlorn and hungry, he wandered in solitude all through the winter, until spring came once more. And so it is to this very day that foxes are denied the comforts of hibernation. I really learned something about foxes. <laughs> I read lots of fairy tales like that when I was little. But the lazy fox and the industrious squirrel, huh? That one I don't think I've heard before. That is not surprising, considering I wrote it. Oh, you wrote it? I did. When Flane was young, she loved fairy tales more than anything. I would read them to her often. This one, however, is a more recent creation. I wrote it for the benefit of the children in the monastery. So, what do you think? I'm curious to hear what sort of impression it made on you. It's so cute! You, you found it to be cute? I can just see it now. You writing fairy tales for your little sister. That's just the cutest thing! 
Honestly, to me, you usually come across as stern and overly perceptive. But now I know you have a sweet side, too. I feel like I'm seeing you in a whole new light. That is... not what I was hoping to hear. Hello, Hilda. Oh, Sedith, good day. Is it? I, uh, uh, did I do something wrong? Not to my knowledge. But I cannot help but notice that you no longer shy away when I speak to you. <laughs> you noticed that, huh? When you stare at me, I feel like you're peering into my soul. And that no longer bothers you? Does that mean your conscience is finally clear? Nah, I got used to it. I know you're not scary. That's unfortunate. You really should do something to correct your lazy behavior. Maybe that's true. I wouldn't want to be like the fox, forced to wander in the snow all winter. I'm pleased to see you grasped the moral of the story. Don't you think the squirrel was a little cold-hearted, though? He seems not to care about what happens to his friend, as long as he himself is happy. You know, that is a valid point. I have no wish to encourage that attitude in children. Perhaps if the fox only survives thanks to the squirrel kindly sharing some of his acorns. How does that sound to you? I like it okay. I'm sure the kids will admire that nice, compassionate squirrel. Thank you for your insight. As it happens, I have some other stories that I wrote for Flame. Would you like to hear them? You should make a book out of them. It's a shame that only Flane and I get to enjoy them. What a fine idea. I will begin immediately. Though I feel such a book requires illustrations, and I have no artistic talent. Would you lend me a hand? Uh, I think Ignatz might be a better choice, but I can probably manage. Not like they need to be terribly fancy. I could use some more of your wisdom with regard to the content of the stories also. That sounds like a pain, but I'm invested in this now. Let's do it! Excellent! That's wonderful to hear. Let us produce the very best book we can, for the children's sake. You look so excited. I can't help but lend a hand. Ah, Hilda. Business in town? Yes. I'm buying some art supplies. Oh, to replenish what you used on our book, I presume. Allow me to compensate you. No, no need. I use them for my own crafting and accessory making, too. By the way, your tales seem quite popular. I saw a big crowd of kids at the church. Wonderful to hear. We made the right choice leaving it there. I also heard a mother scolding her child by saying, if you keep blazing around, you'll turn into a fox. Though, as long as there's a friendly squirrel around, being a fox doesn't sound so bad. Hmm, that was not my intention. Perhaps the story was better off in its original form after all. Anyway, I guess you've got something to keep you busy after the war. Originally, these stories were for Flane, but now there are lots of people who love them. The kids are looking forward to your next release. You don't want to disappoint them. I do wonder how appropriate it is to sit around and write children's books in an era of great change. An era of great change. Isn't that exactly when kids need something to hold on to? They're the future of Folin, after all. Astute observation. But if I am to continue in this trade, I will require more of your assistance. Really? You're a successful author, and you still want to use my lousy illustrations? I need an artist who can appreciate the message, and who can draw pictures that resonate with children. Your art has a certain careless quality that I feel matches my work splendidly. A careless quality? That doesn't sound like a compliment. Did you not purchase those art supplies today in the hopes of continuing with this work? Well, yes. I guess I can stick with it until the war is over. Such lukewarm commitment. No matter. We can consider the post-war situation when we come to it. Hmm. I'm pretty fond of being a fox. But becoming a squirrel wouldn't be the worst thing. I'll admit, I like seeing Sedith pour his heart into these stories. What was that? 
Didn't say a word. Let's get to work on that sequel. <laughs>